not great. I ate fruit for 90 days on my carnivore diet, and here's what happened. I hadn't had a banana for years, literally years without bananas. Hello, welcome back. So there's strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and it's gonna be very delicious. We even got a couple little plums for dessert tonight. I also snuck some blueberries into a few of them. Oh, the blueberries right on the top. Genius! Have I not thought of this idea sooner? Hello? Lemons! I love lemons. Bananas, apples, grapes, and raw yogurt. It's a party. I made some ice cream. Basically, I just took the Tremona yogurt and strawberries, blended them together. Tastes like sour strawberry ice cream. And to really take it to a whole nother level, put some salt on top, it makes it the perfect combo of salty and sweet and mmm. All right, let's address the elephant in the room. I am not the carnivore MD. I'm Lily Kane. So when I eat fruit, I don't actually think that I'm eating a carnivore diet, but when I didn't have the fruit, I was eating carnivore. So why did I add the fruit to my carnivore diet? There's three main reasons. Essentially, my diet at its core is a carnivore diet. Why? Because meat is very low inflammatory, it's easy to digest, and meat, fish, eggs, and dairy have all of the vitamins and minerals my body needs to not only be healthy, but also to thrive. Animal foods are also more nutrient dense than plant foods, and they have more bioavailable nutrients than plant foods. So I don't actually think that I have to eat fruits and veggies to be healthy. Animal foods are, I mean, they got me covered, really. You eat those, you're golden. But I personally like adding in different foods like seasonings, like veggies or fruit and seeing how it makes me feel. So the first reason why I want to do this 90 day fruit experiment is to see if it would take my health to a whole nother level. Dr. Paul Saladino sure thinks so. So I said, hey, let's test it. The second reason is that in comparison to vegetables, fruit has less anti-nutrients, but also they taste better than veggies. So I do sometimes try and incorporate veggies, though I couldn't tell you the last time I did 90 days in a row with vegetables. I just feel like why would I waste my chewing efforts on vegetables when I can eat bacon, you know? So the second reason is that fruit just tastes better and has less anti-nutrients than vegetables. Third reason, it was summertime when I started this experiment, so there was a lot more local and in-season fruit. And lastly, and the most important reason, is that I was looking for another way to add in more calories. I personally eat way too much protein. I have about 180 to 190 grams of protein a day. I'm five foot two, 110 pounds. I don't need to be eating that much protein. So I wanted to reduce my protein, but not reduce my calories. So my only options therefore are to add fat or carbs. And it's really hard for me to increase my fat without increasing my protein, unless I do things like butter and ghee, other fats like tallow, bacon grease, duck fat, or any fats that I would more or less cook with, because I usually wouldn't wanna just be like eating spoonfuls of bacon grease. Um, the cooked fats or the rendered fats, I don't digest very well, and it usually sends me straight to the bathroom, so no thank you. But the colder, uncooked fats like butter or ghee, I can digest those very, very beautifully. But I already eat butter every single day. I have butter with almost every meal that I didn't want to just keep adding more and more gobs of butter because I've already got all the vitamins and minerals out of butter. It's really not necessary for me to just keep eating loads and loads of butter. Even though I love it, I love butter. I just decided I was going to try to add some carbs in the form of fruit and see how that would go while I lowered my protein. I stopped having fruit in July of 2020 
other than avocados. And then in November of 2020, I stopped having avocados because they were no longer in season. They were expensive as heck and they were hard as rocks. And avocados were the last plant food I removed from my diet before I was eating strict carnivore. No coffee, no condiments, just meats. So I had meat and avocados. Once they weren't in season, I didn't have the avocados. I looked on my plate. All I had was the delicious meats. And so I wasn't ever intentionally trying to eat carnivore. The winter made me do it. Then about six months later, I tried to have an avocado again and it made me break out into a rash. So I said over this and I didn't have avocados again for probably another year. Enough about avocados. I mean, avocados are a fruit, but I don't think most people consider them like a fruit fruit since they don't have any sugar. As far as sugary fruits, I stopped having fruit in July of 2020, sugar fruits in July of 2020. And then it wasn't until August, 2021, when we went on vacation where we were like, hey, vacation, living it up. Let's enjoy, celebrate. So naturally, one night we had plums, one night we had nectarines. That is, that's vacation. Woo! Once we came back from vacation, we decided that we really enjoyed having that little sweet treat for dessert and decided that we were going to buy blueberries. And because blueberries were the only wild organic fruit that we had access to, that was the only fruit I've had for the last year up until this last 90 days. And eventually it got to the point where I was just so tired of eating blueberries. Lately though, for the past few weeks, blueberries, they just haven't been doing it for me. I just haven't really been enjoying them, so I haven't been having them. The whole point of adding in the blueberries was to have something a few times a week that I would get excited to have that I don't regularly have. But eventually when you regularly have blueberries a few times a week, then it turns into a habit and something that you don't look forward to having. And they just started tasting kind of bland and flavorless. So I was like, why do I keep eating blueberries if I'm not even excited to have them anymore? So I stopped having all fruit again for about a month while I looked for other fruit options. And then that's when I started this 90 day fruit experiment where I wanted to consistently have a piece of fruit every day since with the blueberries, I didn't do it every day. And I wanted to test out other fruits. Plus, like I said, when I started this, it was summertime. And so there were more seasonal fruit options. And with it being hotter out, I was sweating more and losing more electrolytes and fruit can help with electrolytes. So I thought, win, win, win. I do supplement with electrolytes regardless of if I'm having a piece of fruit or not, because if I'm just eating a piece of fruit and eating an all meat diet, I'm not going to get particularly enough magnesium and potassium that I would need. I don't try to hit the RDAs, RDIs, the recommended daily allowance numbers, because I don't think they are completely accurate for someone who's eating a lower carb diet. Even though I was having carbs from fruit, I was still under 30 grams of carbs a day. And so if I was eating a standard American diet, maybe I would be paying more attention to the RDAs, but I know as a low carb person, even Dr. Stephen Finney will argue something like particularly vitamin C, vitamin C and glucose compete for the same receptors. So if someone has a higher carb diet, they may require more vitamin C than someone who eats the lower carb diet. So I don't, try to follow the RDAs specifically, but I do think particularly magnesium and potassium, I don't get enough of from just meat. So I do supplement with Element. It's an electrolyte drink mix that doesn't have any sugar, artificial ingredients, or any funky funkies. They do have a raw unflavored packet that is just sodium, magnesium, and potassium. I'm less concerned about the sodium since I do salt my foods like crazy, but if I was only eating meat, I would be a little bit more nervous that I could become deficient in the magnesium and potassium. So check out Element. There's a link in the description where you can get a free sample pack with any order, or you can go to the URL drinklmnt.com for the free sample pack. All right, let's jump into the pros, the cons, and the farts to this 90 day fruit experiment. Again, I stopped having fruit in July of 2020, and then 
August 2021, started having only blueberries a few times a week, stopped having fruit altogether, and then the first fruit I reintroduced was watermelon. The pros were it was delicious. I hadn't had watermelon in over five years, so it was really good. The cons were the first few nights, I was having diarrhea, I wasn't sleeping great, and I was incredibly hungry. That was the worst con, is that I eat pretty much the same amount of food and the same meals every day. And so I knew it wasn't that I was actually hungry because I ate enough food. And when I have fruit, I have it at the end of the day as my dessert, like a sweet treat. So it was really strange that I ate all of this food, was full after I ate dinner, ate the watermelon, and then after about 10 minutes, I was starving. I woke up hungry, I went to sleep hungry, and it made no sense because I ate a ton of food. Luckily, the hunger, the not sleeping great, and diarrhea went away after the first few days. I'm assuming that it was just kind of a shock to my system, something that I hadn't had for a while, so my body was like, what do I do? And I think it kind of messed up my satiety signals, but after the first few days, then it was, it was all good. The fruit I had over the last 90 days was watermelon, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, peaches, plums, pluots, oranges, bananas, pears, raspberries, cherries, apples, nectarines, grapes, and avocados. Wow, I sound like Dr. Paul Saladino. But keep in mind, this is one serving of fruit. Okay, here's your one serving of fruit. Perfect. Just one serving. One serving of fruit over 90 days. And some of these fruits I just had one time, like the orange, peaches, plums, pluots, those ones I only had one time, one day. And then the other things like a watermelon, I bought a watermelon once, but it lasted me multiple days. So it seems like a lot, but I was trying to rotate through and have more seasonal fruits. So in the beginning of summer, there was watermelons. Now there's more pears and apples. So I'm doing more of those ones, but I just wanted to have more of a broad spectrum of nutrients versus the same fruit over and over. Milk delivery. And I got my desiccated capsules. Thank you. And this is my nutrient dense breakfast. Anyway, I tried all these different fruits and I found again, the problematic fruit for myself was avocados. I broke out into the same rash in the same spot. <sighs> Avocados, why you gotta do me dirty like that? Um, but after a few days of eating them, the rash did go away. And so similarly with the watermelon, when our bodies aren't used to having these foods, it can create a reaction or a negative response sometimes, but give it a little bit of time and it usually goes away. The farting though with avocados, I could, I could not get the toots to go away. Honestly, I was pretty disappointed in the fruit. I had an orange, it looked old and it was pretty flavorless. If I'm having a piece of fruit, I want it to taste sweet, not bland. And like same thing with frozen fruit. Usually with fruit, they pick it before it's ripe. And I guess with the frozen fruit, they pick the unripe fruit and then freeze it. So it really is just not very tasty. I think fruit's pretty expensive considering how little vitamins and minerals I'm actually getting out of it. So overall, I think I've made a whole video on fruit on how it's bred for sugar content and size, picked before ripe, sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, glyphosate, Roundup, they're gassed with ethanol oxide, they're shipped from Timbuktu, they're older, they're usually not in season, they're not local, they're just not as fresh. And I think considering the quantity I'm getting for the value I'm getting, they're kind of expensive. I'll leave the full video in the description, but as far as things that I noticed when I had the fruit, I didn't notice a significant increase in energy levels. My sleep may have improved a little bit. I don't wear an R ring, but my fiance does, and his sleep score definitely did improve. Uh, of course, we're different people, but because I don't wear the ring, he, that's his data. But I also didn't notice any increased acne or bloating or joint pain 
I didn't gain any weight. In fact, I lost a little bit of muscle, though I would say that's not because fruit makes you lose muscle. It's that I was lowering my protein. But the main thing that I did notice with fruit for myself is if I had one piece of fruit, which I did the majority of the time, then it was very neutral. But I did try having two pieces of fruit where after the gym in the morning, I would have a banana with my raw milk. So that was about 9 a.m. And then I would have the other piece of fruit for dessert at around 6.30 p.m. When I had two pieces of fruit a day, then my scalp had some issues. My scalp was flaky, dry, I had more dandruff, and it was not, I don't like having dandruff. If I had a banana and I just had one banana for the day, I didn't notice this. If I had one serving of grapes, I didn't notice this. But I did for a couple, it was probably five days where I tried having a banana and grapes or a banana and a pear. And that's when I noticed that my scalp got a lot worse. So it was probably just too much sugar for myself having obviously an overgrowth of fungus and having that sugar feed the fungus. So two pieces of fruit a day for me was not happening for long because it was just not worth it. I love the taste of fruit, but I love the taste of bacon, steak, fish, burgers, and they don't cause my scalp to have the same inflammation, irritation, dry skin, and dandruff. So if I can't have the taste of fruit as often, it's not that big of a deal to me. I got bacon. I will continue to have fruit in my lifetime, probably not every day, and in the winter, probably not any at all, just because, like I said, I want it to taste good when I eat it, and if it's not fresh, seasonal, local, if it doesn't taste good, then why, I mean, I don't need to eat it. So now that summer has passed, I will, the fruiting will, diminish the buttering will commence i did get a cgm that i'll be wearing for the next couple of weeks and i'll be coming out with a video where i show my blood sugars with the fruit still which were spoiler alert relatively unchanged um and with meal frequencies and different foods i'll be testing out and showing my blood sugars so if that's something that interests you make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed today's video give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking to book a coaching call, there's a link to that in the description. I hope you guys have a happy rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.